Hi everyone. So tell me what you're doing at 8 o'clock. You know what I'm doing? Did you ever have stuffed calamari? Who knows stuffed calamari? <laughs> if you watch that video that I posted of my sister and Dominic, you'd know what I'm talking about. Right? And she says it's gross, Dominic. She was even funny when she was drunk. <laughs> I thought she was funny. I used to stand my ass. After I ripped her out of the bar, I said, let's go, we're going home. Oh, Jesus. She said, what are you, my mother? Yeah. Kind of. <laughs> Rolls reverse, you're older. <laughs> but, kind of. <laughs> Funny. I, I told my daughter that as long as you have garlic and oil and a pan of macaroni, you'll never starve. You'll never starve. Well, you'll never starve anyway, but you never know when things get bad happen to the best of us. I know it happened to me, you know, back in the day. My mother died when I was 21. <laughs> there I was, left with Lewis, six months old. It felt like the rug was pulled out from under me, you know, but that's what happens because your mother takes care of everything. So when she hit the floor at 55 and I was 21 with the six month old, I thought I was gonna drop dead. Oh my God, I said, I can never survive. How am I, how am I gonna raise this, raise this kid? How am I gonna feed him? You know what I mean? That was my biggest fear. Like he needs to eat, he needs to grow up normally. What am I gonna do? So what I do? I had no choice but to get me and my son, my friend Gina in tow with me, so she would never let me go alone. My friend Gina, babes on Instagram. She got on the train, because back then it was in Brooklyn. I was in Brooklyn. We got on the train and we went to Geralimum Street and we went there to get welfare for, for me and Lewis. I had no choice. It's what I had to do. I had to feed my kid. So, and um, sometimes the mo these mothers, I don't know, they want to find a sugar daddy so they can take care of them. Not my style. Not my style at all. I'd rather eat from crumbs from the toaster than take or take advantage of somebody like that. A lot of these girls want you know, to be taken care of. Get the hell out of here. Make your own fucking money, please. Beat it. And listen, I had no education, so I had to tighten the belt because I was a very privileged kid. My mother treated me like a queen. You know, she was always so good to me and to everybody. So it was, it was a real wake-up call how your life could change in a matter of minutes. Okay, so I went to sleep that night peacefully with my son. And that morning in February, that's why I hate February. February took my sister and took my mother. But that fateful morning in February, I got a phone call because my mom had a house in, I'm sorry, a condo in Florida. And my sister Angela happened to be there with her. And I got a phone call that mommy hit the floor. Doesn't look good. So what am I thinking? I'm thinking, oh my God, she fell. You know? What did she fall? Did she did she get hurt? You know, that was my first thought. Not that my mother fell. So not thinking ever. I was screaming. And my cousin Angela, Fat Ange, we call her, she was upstairs in her mother's house, because we all lived in the same house. And she said, come upstairs, because my aunt was up there, my mother's sister. And I went upstairs and they told me the severity of the, you know, what happened. So it was a brain aneurysm, but that they were gonna try to keep her on life support as long as they could, because some people do come back from that. They come back from the brain aneurysm. So 
I was pretty out of my mind. And, you know, my friends came over. My friend Michelle was there. My friend Gina, of course, was there. My cousin was Lisa and Georgina, who was my friends, not only my cousins from the time I was born. And they sat, they stood with me. And my sister-in-law, Mindy, stood with me too. Everybody else had to go down to Florida because that's where she was and see what was going on. So my brother Lewis's wife, Mindy, stayed behind to watch me. And I guess to take care of Lewis, because I gotta be honest with you at this point, I really don't know or remember who took care of Lewis. He was only six months old. And then I drove everybody absolutely crazy because I wanted everybody to lay down, lay together, sit together, don't, nobody go go to sleep. I drove everybody out of their minds. So we kept getting phone calls, you know. So far the, the brain scan is still the same. There's no brain activity. This is the message I was getting. So I was screaming every day. Every second they called me. You know, she's on life support. She's on life support, which means that that machine was the only thing keeping her alive. But I kept telling my brothers and sisters, please don't give up, don't give up. There's always hope. I always think there's hope with everything. There's always hope, there's always hope. She would never give up on us, mommy. Just don't give up on her, you know? So, my sister Donna flew in from California. She flew there. So I really had no brothers and sisters with me. I only had my friends. I had my aunt, I had Mindy, and of course I had so many cousins with me. Um, they didn't leave me. They stood, they slept on the floor with me like a bunch of lunatics in the living room. I wouldn't even go in my house. I stood upstairs at Aunt Fanny's and we sat vigil. The whole time we sat vigil and they sat with me. I can't remember the days, I can't remember if we ate I can't remember if I slept. All I know is I cried so much and I just sat on the floor and cried. So I can honestly say I don't know what happened those days. But then I got a phone call, you know, that they had to make a decision about turning off the life support. So, you know, my stepfather, left it in our hands. He felt like it would be our choice, which was, you know, was nice of him because he really didn't have to listen to us. He, he was the next of kin and he could have done whatever he wanted from day one, but he was so in love with my mother, my stepfather, that, and he loved us. So I never knew for about a year later that I thought my mother died on her own and they didn't pull a plug. But I found out about a year later that they did pull a plug. I was pissed, another fucking day I was pissed. But they said, if you were there and you seen her, it was like seeing a shell of a person. She wouldn't want to be like this. You know, they went about this whole thing, you know, with me. But, you know, I didn't see her laying there, so I don't know. Only they did. So they were probably right. I'm probably wrong. I was just mad. You know, I was young. I was only 21. Now I had Lewis. You know, I was by myself. It was just me and him. So I had to take care of my son. What was I going to do? I had no education, 21 years old. Mother passed away. Where was I going? What was I doing? My stepfather was going back to Florida. He wasn't staying because he took care of me too my whole life. But he was leaving. So I was losing everything. The worst thing that I lost was my mother. But the second worst thing that I lost was my, my mind. Thank God I had my sister, Donna, and my sister, Angela. And truthfully, I had my cousin, Angela, because she would 
come and take Lois for shots because I didn't leave the house for two years. And she would go and get him inoculated, her and my sister, Angela. She would take him and, you know, make sure that he was all, they, would, they would take him and make sure he was all up to date with his shot because I just was in not the right state of mind. My state of mind was horrible. I just want, didn't want to leave the house because I thought that my mother was going to come back through it and I would miss her. Don't ask me why I thought that, but I did. I really did. These are my stuff, Salamad. More of them. Okay. I have to tell you, losing a mom, I mean, I don't know if everybody out there still has their mom. If you do, treat her like a queen. Because, you know, you only really do get one mother. You know, I don't know why they say that. I mean, there really, really is only one father, too. But I don't think that's true because I had my stepfather. And he was the best man to me. When I got married, he had, you know, he never ever missed one breath appointment, never once. And he would sit there and he would cry when I put my gown on. He would cry and cry and cry. And then my mother goes, she would go, what the fuck are you crying about? Oh my God, my mother was crazy like me. What the fuck are you crying about? He was cry, And his name was John Sambuca. And he would just be like a baby. Just sit be sobbing. Of me and Valcon. I was in Valcon. That's where I got my wedding gown. That was a big place back in the day. And he was sitting there crying. <laughs> Such a good man. I miss him. He's gone now too. Such good people. Nothing like the old timers. Nothing like them. Truthfully. And there's never gonna be. Ever. Because that's a dying breed. I consider myself now one of the old timers. Because I, I do like cook and clean and go to work. Well, my mother really didn't go to work. After she met my, my, my mother worked when we were younger. But after that, when she met my stepfather, there was no work. My, my stepfather didn't want her to go to work. So, she stayed home. You know? And, you know, like a lot of my brothers and sisters say, oh, you had a different mother. Mommy was home when you were growing up. You know? They'll say that. I'm glad I had what I had. You know, I, I consider myself very lucky. Um, look, I have Angela as a sister. And I have my brothers. Not all of them are wonderful. But most of them are. Most of them are. And I have a, a nice family. Well, some... Family members aren't very nice, but I guess you got to get one of the two out of those, you know. Yes, definitely. Definitely could be like your real father. Sometimes they're even better, you know, because you're with them more, I guess.